Hello, today we are going to be talking about how your body cells grow and divide. Okay, so last time we talked about the difference between body cells, somatic cells, and gamete cells, which are sex cells. Today we're going to be concentrating just on somatic cells. All right, so there's five major phases in the cell cycle. And when we talked about how DNA replicates, we talked very briefly about interphase. So interphase is actually made up of three different steps, okay? So the first one is G1. G stands for growth, and that's the primary growth phase. And this is where all of the parts of all the normal cell functions are happening, okay? So we've talked about cell respiration and photosynthesis if it's a plant cell. We will soon talk about protein synthesis. That's when this happens, um, how, when things are moving in and out of the cell um, membrane. All of this is happening within the primary growth phase, G1. Okay. The next step is S phase, and S stands for synthesis. Um, this is where, and synthesis just means that something's being made. So this is where the DNA is replicated or a copy of DNA is being made. So after S phase, this is a diploid cell because it's a body cell. So after S phase, this is, in a human cell, it has 46 copies of chromosomes. So there's 46 chromosomes and then each chromosome has its copy. So there's a ton of chromosomes in the cell. The next phase is G2, and that's the secondary growth phase. This one's actually a little bit shorter. This is where the cell um, starts preparing for division. All three of those together are called interphase, and this is the, the longest part of a cell's life cycle is during interphase. The next phase is called mitosis, or you might also see it called M phase. Um, and then the very last step is cytokinesis. Mitosis is actually where the cell divides. And that's where we're going to spend most of our time talking about today. So here is a picture of the cell cycle. And I want to point out, um, here is G1. S phase is where the rep DNA is replicated. G2 is where the cell is preparing for division. And then this is actually, right here, is mitosis. And there's a couple different phases within mitosis. And then cytokinesis is right here. And like I said, all of this gray is interphase, and that's where the cell spends most of its life cycle. All right, so what exactly happens in interphase? Um, G1 is the first growth phase, and this is after cell division. Um, this is the longest phase that the cell will spend within its lifetime. The cells mature, so they're going to start growing larger. They're going to make more cytoplasm. They're going to make more organelles so they can fit um, the function for the size of the cell as it grows. And here's where it's going to carry on its normal metabolic activities, which is the things that I talked about before. S phase synthesis is where the DNA is being copied or replicated. So after S phase, it's going to have two complete copies, exact copies of DNA, hopefully. <laughs> Got to get my funnies in. All right, interphase, the G2 is the last phase. This is the second growth phase, and this is going to occur after the DNA has been copied, where the cell's preparing to divide, and then all the cell structures that are needed for division are going to be um, made at this point in time. Okay, here's another picture of the cell cycle. You might want to pause the video here and sketch it really fast, um, but I really like how this has a description. Cells mature, DNA is copied, cells prepared for division, and then by the time all of this is over, we're going to end up with two daughter cells. So go ahead and pause and sketch this out real quick. All right, so just a really quick review. Just kind of go through these questions and see if you can answer them. What does diploid mean? What does haploid mean? What is an example of a somatic cell? What's an example of a gamete cell? List the phases of the cell cycle in order. There were five. Which part of the cell cycle does the cell spend most of its time in? And what are the three parts of interphase? Which phase does DNA replication occur? You really need to know the answer to all of these questions. So if you don't, you need to go back and watch the first video again. <coughs> All right, so let's talk about some cell division. Don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to do any math. 
or much math. All right, so mitosis. The whole point of mitosis is for the nucleus to divide, and this is going to help the cell actually become two. It only occurs in eukaryotic cells, um, and there are four stages. The reason it only occurs in eukaryotic cells is because eukaryotes are the only ones that have nucleus. Um, brain cells and nerve cells won't go through mitosis. You are born with the amount of brain cells and nerve cells that you will ever have. Unfortunately, sometimes those get damaged by choices we make or accidents that are that are occurring. Um, these these can't be uh, replicated again. You're born. You got what you're born with. All right. So here are some pictures of my of a cell actually going through mitosis. These cells were stained, so we can see um, proteins, which are the red fibers, and then the um, bluish coils are actually the chromosomes. Those are the DNA. So let's go and talk about each of these phases real quickly. Of the four mitotic phases, there's prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Okay, so prophase is the first step, metaphase is the next step, and you can see that the the chromosomes are getting organized and are starting to prepare to pull apart. <clears throat> Alright, so some books chunk prophase into a couple different um, sections. So early prophase or um, there's also a pre-metaphase. We talk about it just as, as one prophase, okay? But lots of things happen in prophase. Chromatin so that's when the um, DNA is all uncoiled and it looks like a great big pot of spaghetti if you would look at it, is going to start condensing. And so this is where the visible chromosomes or those X shapes are going to start forming. Mitotic spindles form. Um, so your cytoskeleton and all of the cells is actually made up of, excuse me, of fibers and proteins. So those... Um, spindles are going to start forming and the spindles are just the fibers that start to attach to the chromosomes. Um, centrioles and animal cells will start to form and we're not exactly sure what centrioles are, um, what the point of them are. We know if you take them out of the cell, the cell, cell can still go through cell division and plant cells don't have them, but we do know that they are part of um, the cell cycle of mitosis. So here's a picture. I know it's kind of grainy, sorry about that. But you can see um, here is the nucleus of the cell and you can see the chromosomes are starting to condense. And this is the nucleolus that just kind of hangs out there while this is happening. <coughs> and then that's the cytoplasm. This is a plant cell, you can tell because it's square shaped. In later prophase, the nuclear membrane is actually going to break down. Remember before I told you that the um, DNA can never, ever, ever leave the nucleus? Well, it doesn't. Um, the way that the cell gets around this is the nucleus actually disappears so that the chromosomes can pull apart and then it'll reappear at a later phase. The chromosomes continue to condense and then at the end of prophase they are clearly visible. Um, there are spindle fibers, special ones, that attach to the centromere and the centromere is the, the middle part of the chromosome, so where it kind of comes in like this, and that's where um, these fibers attach. The spindle finishes forming between the poles or the sides of the cell. Okay, so here you can see the nucleus is starting to disappear. The chromosomes are very condensed at this point. And then very late prophase, well, this is the picture I just showed you. It's a big closer up picture. <coughs> Here's your chromosomes. Okay, the next phase is called metaphase. It's very short, and I always remember meta middle. Okay, the chromosomes line up in the middle. This is the way the cell's way of organizing everything. Um, it lines them all up to make sure that that when it pulls it apart, that both of the new forming cells will get a full complement or a full set of chromosomes. So you can see here, um, if this is the cell around it. Um, this is where the nucleus would be, but it's disappeared. So we have all of the chromosomes lining up in the middle. It's actually like an invisible 
esque thing. Okay, kind of like the equator on the Earth. It's it's there, but you don't see it. Um, this they call this the metaphase plate. Um, here are the spindle fibers, okay, and they're attaching right there at the centromeres. And then um, here are the centrioles, okay? So metaphase line up in the middle. Um, the chromosome attaches to the spindle fibers and it moves to the center of the cell, and now they're lined up at the equator. And here's an actual picture of an animal cell where the chromosomes are lined up and you can see the spindle fibers forming and are formed and have attached to the chromosomes in the center. <coughs> um, excuse me, sorry. And there's another picture of a um, cell in metaphase. Anaphase is the next phase, and this is a very quick part of, of metaphase, or sorry, of mitosis. Um, all that happens is those sister chromatids are pulled apart to the opposite poles. So they actually pull apart, and now they're not duplicated copies anymore, they're individual chromosomes. And they're going to move to what we call the poles of the cell, just like the poles of the earth. Okay, so you can see here those sister chromatids were pulled apart. And those um, there's actually little uh, proteins that are attached to the centromere that almost look like Pac-Mans. And they just kind of chomp away at the spindle fibers and shorten those spindle fibers up. It's kind of cool. Here is a picture of a plant cell in anaphase. You can see the chromosomes have pulled apart and they're moving towards the poles of the cell. And then the last phase of mitosis is telophase. The sister chromatids are officially at the opposite poles. The spindle fibers start to disappear. The nuclear envelope reforms around the new sets of chromatids. The nucleolus reappears, and then cytokinesis starts um, at this point, and I'll show you what cytokinesis is in just a second. And then the chromosomes um, start to uncoil and go back to their chromatin. And then cytokinesis, this is not an actual part of mitosis. It's part of the cell cycle, but it's its own little phase. It occurs directly after the nucleus divides, and it literally means the division of cytoplasm. Um, this is where the division of the cell actually occurs. The um, cytoplasm pinches in and then it cleaves and pulls apart. And it, ha it creates two identical halves and those are called daughter cells. We have sister chromatids, now we have daughter cells. And actually there's an extra step in plant cells. A cell plate forms at the equator which will eventually become um, the cell wall. In animal cells, it's a cleavage furrow. And I'll show you a picture of that. Okay, so here is um, a picture of an animal cell, and you can see the cytoplasm starting to pinch in. And then this is another picture of um, cells starting to pinch right there in the center. <coughs> and then you can see right here, is the um, cell plate starting to form of a plant cell, which will eventually, like I said, eventually will become the cell wall. Okay, so daughter cells. Now we have two cells. We call those daughter cells. They have the same number of chromosomes as each other and as the parent cell from which they were formed. So they are identical to each other. The parent cell started out in humans, started out with 46 chromosomes, they replicated, it went through the process of mitosis, cytokinesis, so now these daughter cells have exact replicas of the DNA. They have 46 chromosomes. Um, they are identical, but they're going to be smaller. And then they enter into, after cytokinesis, it goes back into G1 of interface, so this is where it's gonna grow in size, it's gonna become a mature cell, it's gonna do all those metabolic processes that we've discussed. The chromosome number is the same, but the cells are going to be smaller. So, okay, for this one, what is the 2N or the diploid number for these cells? 
Hopefully you said two. All right, so here is, um, we're gonna actually see some of these in a microscope, but let's practice. Do you see any of the stages from mitosis in this microscope slide? I would say that this is an interphase. The chromosomes haven't coiled yet. Um, maybe the beginning of prophase. This is definitely prophase. You can see the nucleus is starting to disappear. The chromosomes are starting to coil. Prophase. I would say this is prophase where the chromosomes are starting to line up but haven't quite made it yet. This is definitely metaphase. Um, this could either be the end of metaphase or the beginning of anaphase. This is clearly anaphase where the sister chromatids are pulling apart. This would be um, the end of anaphase, the beginning of telophase, where they are assembled at the poles. Um, the nucleus hasn't started to reappear yet, but you can see here now the nucleus is starting to reappear and the cell wall or the cell plate is forming. <laughs> so really quick, can you explain cell division? <clears throat> All right, on your own, pause this and locate the four mitotic stages that you see in this plant, in these plant cells. Hopefully, some of the ones that you identified, here's prophase, metaphase, anaphase, where the chromatids are pulling apart, and um, telophase right here. Okay, so there has to be some kind of control of the cell cycle because once the cell starts growing uncontrollably um, or out of control, um, that is actually when the cells become cancerous. So the cell actually, this really cool process occurs, it's controlled by inspections or checkpoints. So after um, G1, it the cell kind of pauses and makes sure, is everything look great? Right? Are we ready to, to divide? Is this a good cell that can divide? So that's when it decides if the cell divides or not. If it's okay, the proteins will stimulate the cell to begin S phase. If not okay, the cell stops and just exists as it is until it dies. Um, after a DNA synthesis, so um, during G2, there's another checkpoint. And if the DNA is um, has synthesized correctly, and, and the cell decides it, it looks okay, it, if it passes, it triggers mitosis. And then at the end of mitosis, um, the cell checks again and it's gonna trigger the exit of mitosis and the beginning of G1 phase. If any of these fail, the cell just stops and then it, die, it continues its processes and then um, when it dies, it's just gone. Uncontrolled mitosis, um, Unlimited cell division is occurring, and this is when cancerous tumors occur. There are some things called oncogenes that are special proteins that can increase the chance that a normal cell develops um, into a tumor cell. And this would be a picture of, um, of cancerous cells. I wanted to show you this pretty cool video, um, the stages of mitosis. It's fairly short, but you can just kind of see a cell growing through it. Hopefully you're seeing some of the um, parts of the cell that you've recognized from when we studied it before. There's the DNA, it's starting to condense and coil up. All the chromosomes have lined up, the spindle fibers attach, and once it's decided it's ready, it pulls it apart. This is anaphase, I told you it's very short. The nucleus is starting to form. Can you see all those mitochondria floating around? the cell pinches and it's become two new cells and they will enter G1 phase. Anyway, I thought that was pretty cool. I wanted to share that with you. Again, if you have any questions, make sure you write them.